So, now for this light vector from the point on the surface to the light source, uh, we, we need to do a bit more than, than previously, but yeah, just, just take the this vector from that one to get what we need. Obviously, we need the length of this vector, the distance from the light source to the surface using this nice little function. Uh, obviously, if the light source is too far away from the surface, it's not going to affect the, the, the color, so we can just return nothing. Good day, this is all done. This is all defined in the light struct. Obviously, we've got the fall off start, the fall off end. After this point, the light does not affect anything because it doesn't reach that far. Normalize it because we are working with unit vectors. Yeah, so when we calculate the attenuation, we pretty much need two values which we'll use to make a fraction. First of all, we take the distance away from the fall off end. Got a nice graph here which will get us this distance. And then we also take off the fall off start from the fall off end to get the fall off range, which is, is this one. Uh, we divide this one by this one. Obviously, if, if the, the point on the surface, which represents here, obviously this is the, the light source, fall off start, fall off end. The closer it is to the surface, the fall off start or the light source, the, the larger this fraction will be. So if this was the distance, the fraction would just be one. The closer it is to the end, the smaller the fraction will be. Obviously, this is like, well, let's say one unit. This is nine units. If you divide one by nine, you get one over nine. Obviously, if it's outside, then we, we, we don't care about it because it's the, the light's not affecting it. And that's attenuation. In real life, it doesn't work like that because light falls off according to the inverse square law, but over here, we're just working with linear fall off. In the spotlight, now we need to know, this is more like a, a torch, like a cone. So the, the further away you are from the center of the this this cone that the, the light makes, the more the, the less intense the light is going to be. So we need a dot product between the light vector. This is going from the light source to the surface and the direction that the, the light is facing, which will give us, once again, a value between 0 and 1, which we raise to the spot power. If they are facing the same way, so if, if this angle is 0, you are going to get 1 from the dot product. If you raise that to the power of 64, you're just going to get 1, so the light strength will not be affected. However, the greater this angle is, the smaller the fraction we're going to get. So once you raise that to the power of 64, you're going to get a minuscule number, so the light strength will be greatly affected. This is where the lights are created. They are given direction and strength in the RGB values. By default, this is what it looks like. Mm, nothing too bad. Uh, let me just change one of the lights. Uh, I'm just going to make them a lot more strong. Uh, so they're all nines. Whoa, this is blinding. So obviously this creates a, a lot brighter scene. Uh, however, if, if the values are not all the same, then we can change the color as well of the light. Obviously, if we get more red, not a lot of green, and, and just a little bit of blue, we get um, it's a nice pink light. Lights up the skeleton like this. And if we set all the light strength to zero, you get no light. You just get the ambient color of the uh, objects in the scene. Until now, what I've demonstrated was only using directional lights, which of course don't take into account a lot of the parameters that are defined in um, the uh, shaders. However, I've created a scene which uses five lights in total, two directional lights, two point lights, and one spotlight. <coughs> I've created this day and night cycle with the two directional lights, one for the sun and then one for the moon. The skeleton, the, the skull's eyes are illuminated red with two point lights with very high intensity and very small fall off range, so it's a very sharp effect. And at night, the skull is illuminated by a spotlight which points straight down. To achieve this, um, I've used some mathematical functions to define how the lights should behave using cos and sine to create the day and night cycle and then just uh, just clipping the strength at during the day and during the night is fully illuminated.